Composing Gloves here. Today we're going to be talking about render settings in FL Studio. Let's jump right into it. So here we are. We've got here, let's just say you've got a beautiful song. Beautiful song. You spent a lot of time working on this and you want to render it. So you can hit Control R or you can go to File, Export, and then you can choose whatever you want to export. So we're going to go with Wave. It's going to ask you to save it. Sure, we'll save it as just whatever it called it. And you're confronted with this menu. Now, I'm going to blast through settings first, and then I'll explain uh, when you might want to change things. So first up, 16-bit is going to be fine for me. Some people will render out 24. We'll talk about the differences here in a second. I almost always render out an MP3 in addition to a wave. I end up doing this anyway. It's a very, very small file and is uh, very useful. So it's worth, it's worth rendering them out at the same time. I bump my bitrate all the way up to max. I leave my resampling alone. This is all fine. I hardly ever touch these things. Dithering is the is one of those things that if you're going to release, then by all means, have dithering on. If you're not, if you're going to continue to work on this somewhere else, don't have dithering on. And then that's it. I just hit start and I let it start. I never use background rendering. I have no experience with it. I don't know if there are any problems associated with it. I've always gone with just regular rendering. Let's talk about a couple settings though that you might wonder about that uh, get brought up every now and then. So as far as quality goes, I leave this all alone, but dithering, what dithering does is it applies some noise shaping and this can be done in various ways and there's actually different types of dithering. And this can uh, actually cause more noise to come up later if you're gonna work with it again later. It has this way of moving noise from one area of the spectrum to a higher area of the spectrum there's a bunch of technicalities and things on how it does this, but it does it. And dithering is what it's called. However, there are, I, there are a lot of types of it. So uh, classical dithering is when you just randomize the last, the last uh, number in your, in your number string. And so you just randomize that. And the purpose of randomizing it is it helps prevent encoding uh, errors from becoming uh, like a pattern. So when you actually encode something, a pattern on how the last bit is uh, rounded can occur and dithering helps fight that. Uh, but there's a lot of other things. So the dithering actually happens in a lot of places in your DAW, but there's like different types and now it's kind of like this blanket term. And if you open up other DAWs and some other audio programs, they'll actually give you like different noise shaping options. But that's what dithering does. So if you're gonna work with your audio in another program after this, you don't want dithering on yet because you don't want that applied. You don't want any noise shaping applied to your stuff because you're going to process it some more and you'll notice that your high end will be a lot more finicky with noise cropping up where it didn't before. So that's one reason why you might not want it on. But if you're going for a release and you're all done, by all means have dithering on, but only once you're a hundred percent completely done. Like if you're rendering out to open in a new session to master, do not have this on. Uh, you're going to do that in your mastering session. Otherwise, have it on. And even some mastering plugins will do things with dithering. And you want to check it out and make sure that you don't have dithering somewhere you don't expect it to be. Uh, but typically, when you render out of your DAW, that's just my recommendation for dithering. That's a bit of how it works. Now, for Wave and MP3, uh, the MP3 bitrate, you can just pump this up. But you saw I had a difference between the, um, the Wave bit depth. So 16-bit, the, the loudness range of 16-bit is enormous. It's plenty big for release. And it's going to, and a lot of things, in fact, um, like code-wise, like the file format they want, they're going to ask for 16-bit. So I usually have 16-bit. Some, uh, for example, 24-bit won't work on some phones, but 16-bit WAV files will. So if you want to do like high-resolution releases, a lot of services will take it and convert it. Uh, they'll take it for 24-bit and convert it anyway. So I usually just hand it the file it wants in the first place so that my audio is just a little less touched. Uh, so that's why 16-bit. But if you're going to go somewhere else and work on it some more, 24-bit uh, is useful. You get some extended range with it and it's a high-resolution file. So if you're rendering out like stems or something, 24-bit uh, or 32-bit float would be the way to go. But if you're rendering to go to like a service or something and you want to hand it WAV files, I usually hand it 16-bit files. Uh, as far as like, will you really hear a difference? In some cases you can, but I can't really think of one off the top of my head where I've noticed like something that I'm like, ooh, like the only time that's happened is if like you get an MP3 that 
has that like noise in the in the you know the mp3 noise when you invert an mp3 against its own wave file and you get that weird crunchy sound that uh i've had occasions where that's popped out to me more than it should you can usually hear if it's an mp3 but as far as can i hear between 16 bit and 24 bit uh i personally can't at least last time i checked <laughs> but uh there's some technical reasons why i'll pick one over the other and that's pretty much it like that's as far as i go and usually if i'm going 24 bit i usually bump up to 32 bit float anyways um but yeah as soon as i'm going for a release or something i'll, I'll jump down to 16 bit but that's there's not a whole lot to render settings you just set this up and go now the person who asked for this video said they were getting some weird results out of fo studio so there's a couple places you could check um your audio settings Make sure that the sample rate that's listed in FL Studio and the sample rate that's listed in your audio interface down here that they match. Um, well, this is the latency, but uh, right here, sample rate. So this, this, and this need to match. If they don't match, then you're going. You could run into problems. It really shouldn't work, but it can. Um, so you'll, you'll hear things like pitches are off, but usually the playback is wrong too. It can get complicated depending also on the driver that you're using. Uh, some drivers don't do the best at communicating with the system driver. And if it has like an, an ASIO counterpart, I've had weird results. So this is somewhere I'd check. This is the only thing though I can really think to uh, go and look at. There is very, very likely the much more likely case for you is you have something weird in one of your channel paths. You have a weird thing, you have a weird plugin somewhere that's doing something that you are unaware of, or the plugin is in a demo mode and it's screwing with your audio when you render uh, to sort of say like, hey, I'm in demo mode still. I've had that isotope stuff that I've owned, I've had to uninstall and reactivate. It's one of the reasons why I don't use their plugs as much anymore because it happens way too much. For some reason, isotope will just randomly deactivate on me and I'll have noise coming through and I have to go find where it is. And it's a, it's kind of a big pain. So that's rendering. If you have any questions, let me know, subscribe and have a blessed day.